Hello, so I'm going to start um, a series of um, mini lectures on the role of um, uh, lifestyles, nutrition and lifestyle in the prevention of cardiovascular disease. So this is a, a, the part one. It's a bit about an introductory uh, lecture on the epidemiology. So how big is the problem? Okay, so based on CDC data, around 25%, a quarter of the causes of death in US and in many other developed countries uh, is due to heart disease. Then, of course, if you put together stroke and uh, other related diseases, we will see later, the numbers are, are, are bigger, but let's say around 30%. And um, these are more recent data published in uh, circulation. This is a report from the American Heart Association in 2020. These are data from 2017 in US. And as you can see here, cardiovascular disease by far is the leading cause of death, followed by cancer, accidents, um, respiratory disease, Alzheimer's disease, and diabetes. Not only in, in, in US, Europe, Australia, um, so in, in the most developed countries, industrialized countries, uh, but also uh, uh, all over the world, as you can see, cardiovascular disease is the main cause of death. Uh, much, it has a much bigger share than malaria and many other diseases, even again in developing or in developed countries. So if we look into the cause of cardiovascular disease, again, these are data from the American Heart Association, uh, basically 80% of the cause of cardiovascular disease are related to atherosclerosis slash hypertension, diabetes. Indeed, as you can see here, 42%, even almost 43% is due to coronary heart disease. Then, you know, we have a 17% due to stroke, and we're going to discuss about it later, you know, stroke, you know, the... Um, vascular atherosclerotic based stroke and hemorrhagic stroke is more you know hypertensive related and then you know we have heart failure heart failure nowadays is mainly due to atherosclerosis in the past you know the, the valvular disease due to streptococcus and other ones had a major were major players but nowadays heart failure is a result of uh, atherosclerosis complications and then you know cardiovascular disease related to high blood pressure and disease of aorta and peripheral arteries okay so around more than 80 percent now if we look at the burden not the death cause of death because you know you can you may die of cardiovascular disease, but concomitantly uh, you might have a number of other chronic diseases. This is typical of people in Western societies. But you know what is the burden? So these are data published in Lancet in, in 1999 from the Framinger Heart Study, and as you can see here, just for coronary heart disease approximately 49% of men and 32% of women, they will develop coronary, uh, a coronary disease event that in these studies is, uh, it, it, it includes angina pectoris, coronary insufficiency, myocardial infarction, and coronary death. So almost 50% of men in US are gonna develop one of these four uh, events that are basically manifestations of coronary heart disease. So 
is a big burden. It's, it's, it's a huge problem. And indeed, these are, again, recent data from a circulation paper by Benjamin and then the, the 2020 update of the American Heart Association on heart disease and stroke statistics. As you can see here, the heart rate uh, disease death rates 2014-16 in people older than 35 years, you know, you see the, the, the high concentration. <clears throat> but uh, again, statistics says that approximately every 40 seconds, an American will have a myocardial infarction. And similarly, approximately every 40 seconds, an American will have a stroke. And we know that both myocardial infarction and stroke risk is due to modifiable risk factors. And I'm gonna talk about these factors and interventions in the following uh, lectures. So, and then, you know, about 6.2 million Americans uh, had a heart failure in 2013-16 and they, uh, prevalence of heart failure is on the rise. And uh, on April 27, 2018, almost 4,000 Americans were waiting for a heart transplant. On average, <clears throat> an American dies of cardiovascular disease every, every 37 seconds, not coronary heart disease, but in general, cardiovascular disease every 37 seconds, and of a stroke every 3.5, 3.6 minutes. So these are basically huge, huge numbers, and unnecessary numbers, as we will discuss later. So apart from the burden, what is the cost? For, for the society, for, for the taxpayers uh, of these epidemics. So this is a report of the Milken Institute uh, based on data of 2016. And as you can see here, the, if we look at the total direct cost, healthcare cost, have been estimated in $1.1 trillion, and cardiovascular disease alone is responsible for $294 billion. And then, you know, we have Alzheimer's disease, uh, cancer, diabetes, mainly type two diabetes that you know, counts for 95% of the causes of diabetes. And then, you know, arthritis and back pain are also major problems. And again, here, you know, there are many things people can do to prevent the back pain by exercise and posture exercise and other activities before it becomes, you know, a, a real problem. But if we look at the total cost, so direct and indirect costs is 3.7 trillion a year in US and cardiovascular disease accounts for 1.46 trillion dollars huge numbers here in the same study they they subcategorize the different disease again these are total direct cost 1.1 trillion and uh, as you can see here and we're going to talk about it later you know the different uh, you know you, you have uh, coronary heart disease um, is $72 billion. Um, and, uh, and then you have diabetes, hypertension, Alzheimer's, stroke, uh, and, and, and many cancers and uh, then other diseases. Uh, if, we if we look at the total cost of 3.7 trillions, hypertension, and we're gonna talk about hypertension later, accounts for 1.042 trillion dollars. And then you have diabetes, coronary heart disease, and, and, <clears throat> and many others. It has been predicted in this report 
that by 2035, 45 percent of the u.s population is projected to have some form of cardiovascular disease so almost half of the u.s population and the total cost of cardiovascular disease are expected to reach 1.1 trillion by 2035 with direct medical costs projected to reach 750 billion dollars um, uh, direct uh, plus another 368 billion of indirect costs. So again, huge, huge numbers. So let me conclude this, um, this first part with um, this um, um, figure that I modified from a paper that I wrote from for Nature Review Cardiology because that's an important point and you know this is going to start this is going to be the basis for starting the discussion about cardiovascular disease and many other uh, chronic diseases because as doctors we have been trained to treat diseases as single entity so we divide diseases in silos so you know you are an oncologist and you treat cancer <clears throat> in reality in modern days because it's too complicated there are oncologists that are specialized in breast cancer oncologists specializing prostate or lung or um, throat and many other ones because they the the chemotherapy schemes, treatment schemes are too complicated and, 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 and therefore, you know, you have specialized oncologists. The same is true for cardiologists. More and more you have cardiologists who are specialized in, uh, in uh, uh, intensive uh, care of uh, coronary events. You know, you have arithmologists, uh, cardiologists specialize in heart failure, and, and, and those who are doing the, the, the procedures, uh, like uh, placing a stand. And each uh, branch of medicine is becoming super specialized because of the massive growing of knowledge and different type of drugs and, and, and interventions. And that's fine, you know, if you have a problem because you are, you are having a cancer, you want to be treated. Or if you have, you know, a heart attack, you want to be treated. But the point is that many of these diseases that, chronic diseases that apparently they are different diseases, they share a common metabolic substrate. So many of the most common type of cancer in Western countries, coronary artery disease, stroke, vascular dementia and probably also uh, Alzheimer's disease, heart failure, fatty liver disease, diabetes, you know, probably 70% of chronic kidney disease where 40% is due to type 2 diabetes and another 30% is due to hypertension, uh, atherosclerosis, uh, and so on in many uh, different branches of medicine. There are a number of diseases that can share a common metabolic substrate where ab abdominal obesity and other factors that are uh, modulated by uh, lifestyle factors like uh, excessive caloric intake, unhealthy diet, sedentary lifestyle, mental stress, smoking pollution, they are acting on these uh, determinants uh, insulin resistance, increased sympathetic adrenal activity, inflammation, uh, um, insulin resistance, and uh, and uh, type two diabetes and uh, and, uh, and hyperglycemia, immune dysfunction. Uh, in the cancer, then you know this translates into alterations of insulin and uh, IGF one and uh, sex hormones bioavailability and many other growth factors that are impairing uh, uh, DNA repair and uh, genomic stability and other factors including the immune system and so again you know the point is that if we work 
well before you know we have a disease because to develop cancer cardiovascular disease stroke or fatty liver disease doesn't happen in one day or in a week or in a month that you are misbehaving in terms of lifestyle it takes many 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 years of altered factors hormones and metabolites and lipids and blood pressure to develop a myocardial infarction it doesn't happen in one day and therefore the concept based on the biology of aging paradigm is that we can act and delay or even prevent the accumulation of molecular metabolic damage leading to multiple chronic disease so if you up if you act upstream you can prevent not one but many of these chronic diseases but the beauty of this biology of aging paradigm is that you know even if you have developed a disease by acting on these important determinants you can reduce the risk of progression or of recurrence of many chronic disease in a very mechanistic uh, with, a, with a very mechanistic approach that is i think is an important uh, new way of uh, approaching medicine and most importantly health the the the, the promotion of uh, health and healthy longevity and uh, for today uh, i think this is enough thank you